you'll be able to i don't think i can use um my keys for it so i'll have to ask you to um move the slides okay um thank you very much indeed sorry for the slight um uh delay uh, there was a problem with my computer my talk is on development of innovative uh, dental products and really it's from uh concept to uh, consumer um and it's only a short presentation but i hope i give you a flavor of what is involved um my co-presidents are Richard Watley and Robert Hill. Next slide, please. And this is just a disclosure statement that uh, Robert Hill and I um, have several patents on uh, bioglass formulations and other products. And we're also co-founders and directors of a, a university spin-off company, which is called Biomin Technology. Richard Watley was uh, formerly the chief executive officer of the Biomin and remains a consultant for the company. And both Robert and I have received research grants um, and uh, from various sources. Next slide, please. And really, this, uh, the aim of the presentation is just to give you a flavor of what's involved in um, developing uh, products, particularly on the dental side. Um, and this example really is from a university environment, which um, going from a concept of discussion into um, successful uh, uh, consumer and clinical environment. Next slide, please. So um, normally I would develop this in a, in a longer session, but briefly I'll give you an awareness of the processes that required for dental materials reaching the commercial market is not as simple as you might think. Uh, I want to outline uh, the product of ideal dental product, which is for dentine hypersensitivity as an example, but you could apply it for any other uh, product, uh, depending on the, the claims that you want to make. Um, and to give you a flavor of some of the mo more modern materials that are being developed uh, for conditions such as sensitivity and remineralizing um, products. So what I would say is a lot of products are really simple modifications of products that have been in existence for a long time. And um, just to introduce you to the novel bioactive glass based products, which have been developed, have been developed uh, over the many years, but have had taken a new source of life um, in recent years. Next slide, please. Well, I would say the development of products, uh, not only for the dental market, but the pharmaceutical market, is a complex um, process um, going from a, a number of stages uh, from the laboratory before it even gets to the clinic. And it has to be successful and safe to go into the consumer environment. Um, one of the problems is that uh, there's a lot of money spent in research by the companies and I'll focus on the dental companies. Um, one company used to spend $12 million um, just on uh, a one product uh, in their research. Um, obviously, if you're a single researcher, uh, without that backing, you're going to struggle. Next slide, please. So you're sitting in an office and suddenly you have an idea. Um, and it's not that simple. You can see that it can take many attempts to even get anywhere near um, going forward. Next slide, please. This gives you a, a brief indication of the complex um, procedures. Um, we talk about phases, uh, phase one, two, and three, and four. Um, what is often forgotten is this follow-up phase. But before it even goes anywhere near the laboratory of the clinic, we have clinical pre-testing, laboratory tests, uh, research protocols, um, animal testing, although there's a move uh, away from animal testing in a number of European countries. Um, it, it's a bit of a, a paradox because some of the uh, regulate the FDA require animals to test for toxicity. And uh, uh, that's a, a problem at the moment. You then go into clinical search where you start with small uh, 
patient pools, uh, looking at what is called a dose finding, what's the exact dose, uh, proof of concept. Uh, then you uh, move on to phase three, larger studies, where you um, compare the safety and efficacy of various products. And then you have the uh, analysis to see whether it works. Um, I've been involved in a number of studies where we've had uh, successful um, reduction of pain, but um, the problem was that the consumer didn't like the taste of the product. So then in that case, um, either you reformulate the, the, the taste or um, you ditch the product and often they will ditch the product this day. Often what's forgotten is this follow up where when the product's out in the market, you get feedback from adverse effects and the likelihood. And this isn't ideal, um, but uh, because often we don't get all the information. Um, as you can see here, um, out of all the uh, studies, not just dental, but also um, from uh, medical, only 5% of um, the products actually um, reach the market. Next slide, please. Hello, next slide, please. So to give you a quick flavor, um, we, I, although I've just mentioned the fact that how long it can take. Sometimes companies take years to develop um, the, their products, but the university I'm working at um, with my colleague, Robert Hill, we were approached by a company um, to develop a product. And because the, the management was structured very short, we were dealing directly with the managing director. And within two years from the, the, the initial discussions of um, and concept, lab work and so on, we were able to get a toothpaste and a um, mouthwash out of the market within two years. And that is unusual. Next slide, please. This is the, the product which you might have come across. Next slide, please. So this is give you a flavor um, of a cost of products. Um, and basically you can see the various stages going from uh, patent. A patent normally has about 20 years of life. So you can't waste that. Other, otherwise, other people then take advantage of your, um, your knowledge. You have to do cytotoxicity. You have to trademark clinical trials, evaluation report if it's a medical device approval. Um, you also have to be involved in quality management systems, medical device approvals, um, uh, FDA, um, up to £30,000, um, which is probably slightly more in dollars. And CE um, marking in the EU is also about 30000 But you also have to maintain that. Um, uh, then you have to develop the uh, product. So there's marketing costs and, uh, and such like. So you're talking about um, introducing a new toothpaste with a medical device claim. Uh, you're talking about five hundred thousand pound, six seven hundred thousand dollars or euros, on top of your product development costs. Now, a large company can absorb this, um, but obviously, um, individual um, university workers can't. Next slide, please. Now, in the United States, regulatory approval through the FDA. Um, you, you have a, a, what is called a pre-market 510K registration. Um, for, um, the FDA may either approve it for market introduction, either as an over-the-counter or prescription drug. There is a monograph which uh, restricts the, um, what you can say, um, but as it, as it says here, uh, toothpaste um, either um, develop anti-caries drugs of the teeth, um, and in this definition, an anti caries drug is defined as a drug that aids in the prevention and prophylactic treatment of dental cavities, decay caries. And that covers formulations of 850 to 1100 um, ppm of fluoride. Next slide, please. 
um, for Europe, for those of you in Europe, uh, we require an EU approval. Um, if, however, the fluoride concentration exceeds more than 1450, it, it's considered a medicine and uh, it's under the medical medicines regulations. And if you have a medical device and consumer product, you, it requires a manufacturer to maintain uh, a quality management system. Uh, they are very expensive to um, uh, maintain. And again, it creates a problem for an individual. And if you're within a uh, university environment, you re re require the university help. Next slide, please. Now you may have seen in some of the products, um, consumer acceptance, the American Dental Association seal is not regulatory in the sense, but they follow the FDA and um, they restrict what you can say in the claims. Um, and for example, you, 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 you wouldn't be allowed nowadays to have a, uh, something like a sugar uh, in your toothpaste. There was a sugary content many years ago with one particular toothpaste for children, which was very strange. Um, so that wouldn't be allowed in any of their accepted toothpaste. And the claims um, have to be supported as well. Next, next slide, please. I'll go very briefly here because of time. Um, a toothpaste contains both active and inactive ingredients. Um, fluoride is the main one. Um, and if you uh, have to make a claim, you can only make it on the fluoride, strengthens teeth to prevent tooth decay and remineralization in the early stages of tooth decay. Uh, it's a requirement at the moment for the ADA acceptance um, that it requires fluoride. But as many of you know, some European states moving away from fluoride which may be an issue in later years next slide please you also have desensitizing agents and antimicrobial agent um, triclosan or triclosan was used for many years but um, was approved by the fda but has been banned now on environmental um, grounds so you will find that triclosan is no longer commercially available uh, not only in the US, but other markets as well. Uh, most toothpaste will have an abrasive um, agent. Uh, you need it to remove uh, extrinsic stain. Um, next slide, please. You also need uh, various other things, thickening, um, uh, peroxide is often used. Um, titanium is used in some, but there's a move afoot whether it's to make keep titanium. Um, uh, and even aluminium coated uh, tubing is, is being questioned as well. And some of you may not be aware that um, the Microbead Free Waters Act of 2015 prohibits cosmetics and over the counter drugs for uh, containing microbeads as from 2019. There's also a concern about so called nanoparticles as well. Um, so that might affect future development. Next slide, please. Now, if we, again, looking at an example of sensitivity, um, Grossman in 1935, and I updated it um, some 20 odd years ago. Uh, what is an ideal um, product? Um, if we move on to the next slides, please. What you have to realize is that a lot of these earlier statements were made when the products were not in. Um, uh, as uh, smart and intelligent as they are now. So many of these statements can, may have to be changed. But if you're looking at an over counter product, it has to be safe uh, and it may not be effective in a mouthwash, but it might be effective in a paste. Um, it has to exert its uh, effect over time, relief of pain. Uh, how long does the fluoride last? Very often uh, when people brush the teeth, most of the fluoride in the toothpaste is washed off um, uh, so it doesn't give much opportunity but you to work but you really you want a, a paste which keeps in the mouth and lasts up to 12 hours at least um, it needs to be safe to be used has to be effective and it has to make the claims that you're making um, and obviously it has to appeal to the right market um, and at the end of the day it has to satisfy the end user uh, you may have a very good toothpaste or product but if the end user doesn't use it like it, 
you won't you won't um, sell it. Next slide, please. If you look at in office or professionally applied, again the similar um, aspects. But it has to be effective, desired mode of uh, action. Irks relieve pain you expect as a dentist to replay, um, relieve pain immediately or within five ten minutes. Whereas an over the counter product would probably um, last up to two weeks before it gets any effect. So um, the patient's expectations here is that you're applying something in your in your practice, it would be effective quickly. It has to be safe. And again, going back to Grossman, um, we were thinking of amalgam, um, it shouldn't stain teeth. There are some products out today which still stains teeth and some procedures may have adverse pulpal changes has to be effective in well-controlled clinical studies and again support the claims um, easy to apply uh, shouldn't be messy and it should be painless and again it should satisfy the patient uh, uh, before they leave the practice next slide yes. another way of looking at it again looking at the example of a desensitized tooth pain, is looking at it uh, on its chemical characteristics you need the rapid um, formation of appetite in the mouth. Um, you would want a floor appetite rather than a, which is insoluble, or rather than a soluble hydrocarbon um, appetite. Particle size needs to be effective to get into the dentinal tubules. Strontium is was used for cares inhibition and remineralizing potential. The trouble is with it, it's very expensive to use. The product needs to be um, released fluoride over a period of time and you may wish to include potassium in a slow release device. Um, you have to keep the pH um, rise of the toothpaste uh, below the age of eight otherwise you may start to increase the calculus formation and it doesn't it shouldn't be harder than the enamel otherwise you will start um, affecting the enamel. Uh, and also it should be inexpensive to you uh, to produce. Next slide, please. Now, you're probably all aware that there's been major developments and some, as I've said, there are, are tweaks of existing products. Um, some of the newer ones are the so-called nanohydroxyapatite, the uh, refined back to glasses, um, self-assembling peptides, and uh, the protease inhibitors and there's a combination of uh, lasers and also the application of professionally applied products. Next slide please. Bioactive glasses were developed by Larry Hench, um, that's moved on, um, so uh, in the 70s and um, it was initially developed for orthopedic and eventually it came into dental use initially as um, uh, bone uh, products. Um, I was using uh, per perio glass um, in the 90s um, and it then took a course of um, making a toothpaste for sensitivity um, and uh, the, the original product was what is called 45 S5. Um, the product that we've developed in the university is a modification that now of uh, the bioactive glass uh, 45 S5 um, and it is a new patent. It's outside what is called the patent of the 45 S5 which incidentally has run out I think it's been over 20 years. So we were looking for uh, a new sustainable glass which um, where the fluoride was in the glass and that we could uh, release the fluoride as a slow release device over 12 hours. We also developed a, a, a chlorinated glass um, the taste is slightly different there. Some people it's a bit salty. And after laboratory evaluation and subsequent clinical studies, uh, this particular study is now classed as a medical device, uh, class 2B and distributed in a number of countries. Next slide, please. So here is um, uh, a dentine slice before, this is laboratory before and after and um, to demonstrate that it blocks the tubules. It has um, uh, approval in the um, US now, uh, it was received what's called a 
10K of approval for the relief and sensitivity. And um, at this stage, it's the only fluoride containing bioglass uh, toothpaste, which has been approved for use in the USA. Next slide, please. Now, the advantage of this is that it has a, um, a copolymer, um, which enables the, uh, the calcium, the phosphate, uh, and, uh, to stick to the tooth surface and prevent it being washed away. Um, and then the biomin particle with the fluoride in the glass will gradually dissolve um, over uh, the next 12 hours. What you do need to be careful of is that you need calcium, phosphate and fluoride uh, to affect remin. It's no use just putting the fluoride in. And this is something that uh, people have realized. Next slide, please. Now, um, Professor Tenkati in, in Acta in Amsterdam has argued for a number of years that you don't need a lot of fluoride. You need a fluoride over um, a longer period of time. So it needs to release. Now, irrespective of how much fluoride you put in to your toothpaste, whether it's 1100 parts or 5000, the, the, the curve, the decay curve is the same. So why you be left with slightly more fluoride with a 5,000 parts million um, fluoride, for example, or higher, um, within a, an hour or so, most of that fluoride will, will disappear. So by innovative techniques of maintaining the fluoride within the glass over a long and slowly uh, releasing it over time, it is argued and shown in laboratory studies that we can um, maintain a fluoride release over up to 12 hours. The interesting thing as well that it does resist an acid um, uh, challenge, as you can see from these two um, SDMs uh, here. Next slide, please. So the question was, what was the ideal loading of the glass? Um, if you look at the original 45 S5, which is the Novin product, they have a 5% loading. Um, in previous studies, which I was involved in before I came to uh, Queen Mary University, uh, I worked in Eastman uh, Dental in London, and uh, we looked at the original uh, prototype of Novamin, and we did a dose re re ranging study between uh, 2.5 and 7.5, and we find, found that the 7.5 um, loading of the glass was very effective, but they decided um, to go for the 5%. And partly the reason for that is the cost of the glass. The, the glass is very expensive, so uh, cost is a key. So we redid this test uh, looking at um, our, our new product. And we find that, as you can see, I think, I hope you can see from the, the graph here of, of fluid flow reduction um, that the uh, reduction between 5% and 15, 20% is pretty much the same. It's not significant. So it's reasonable to use the 5% loading. Next slide, please. I know it's been very short um, uh, and sweet, I know because of time, but thank you for uh, the opportunity to the Magnus um, uh, group and also for you for listening. Um, what I would um, conclude with is that simply formulating uh, a toothpaste is not simple. You need specialist formulations and um, for the, uh, in order to develop this toothpaste, we were reliant on um, a group Pharma in India who uh, formulated our products and, um, and we've been able to successfully um, market them in numerous countries. So um, going from the concept to the consumer, it's not just one person, it's a, a whole team and you rely on the expertise of every member of that team. And without um, commercial um, partners to develop this product, it would be impossible to get it to market. Thank you very much for um, the opportunity and thank you for listening.